Hey guys, I'm BuilderDude35, and this week I'm going to be teaching you how to make a wall follower program using the EV3 ultrasonic sensor. Alright, so first I have opened the EV3 programming software to a fresh clean program. The first order of business is going to be to set the desired distance that we want the robot to stay away from the wall. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling a little bit lazy tonight, and I don't necessarily want to write this distance out every time in the program. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write it once with a variable. We're going to drag out a variable, set it to write numeric, which it's already set to, and we're going to make a new variable, and I'm just going to call it distance, like that. And we're going to write the desired distance that we want the robot to stay away from the wall in either inches or centimeters. We haven't de determined inches or centimeters yet, so just write the number. In my case, I'm going to use 5 centimeters as this example, so I'm just going to write 5. The second step is going to be drag out a loop block. Now, right now, I have the loop block set to infinity, which you obviously don't want if you're using for FLL, because then you're just going to follow this uh, wall forever and then crash into something. Of course you can change this to something else but that's covered in another video. For now I'm just keeping it at infinity. So the next step after that is going to be to take out a sensor block. In this example we're using the ultrasonic sensor but you could also substitute an infrared sensor for this. This is where you're going to choose whether or not you want to measure inches or centimeters. In my case I'm measuring centimeters so I don't have to do anything. Uh, if you wanted to change it to inches you can but we have set it to centimeters and we're going to read the sensor value and compare it to our desired distance so what we're going to do is take out one of these nifty compare blocks first we're going to set to see if the distance is less than the desired uh, value so we're going to choose less than and what that's going to mean is the robot is too close to the wall so we'll want to steer away from the wall. After we've plugged that in, we're going to take out a switch. We're also going to go back in here, take out another one of our variable blocks, but instead of writing, what we're going to do is read its value. It's a numeric value, remember? And we're going to choose the variable from before, which was distance. And so now you can just take this tab and then drag it into the B value and so what we've done here is we've defined the number distance is now equal to 5 we're taking the ultrasonic sensors value plugging it in as A the distance is B so what we're going to see is whether or not the ultrasonic value is less than the distance value that we've set and we're going to move on to the switch block here which we're going to set to logic the result of this compare block is going to go into this logic block so now if the ultrasonic distance is less than 5, it's going to move on to this case here. And if it's not, it's going to move on to this case here. So in this example, I'm going to assume that the wall is to the left of the robot. If in your case it's to the right, you can just reverse the steering that I'm using. But what we're going to do is put move tank blocks up here. And I'm just going to turn this on. And now, if the wall is to the left of the robot, and the robot is too close to the wall we're going to want it to steer right so to do that we're going to overpower the left motor let's put that at 80 and underpower the right motor that's going to be at 60 and you can change this power split however you want a bigger difference in power is going to make it make the robot make a sharper turn now moving on we're going to do a similar process that we did here down here so you can just copy all of the same blocks that you had up there and we'll make minor edits from there. So we're going to take this, make sure it's set to the same unit to measure as before and also the same port. Again we're going to take out a compare block and put that right after the ultrasonic block. We're also going to take out a variable block and just slide that in between. Make sure you set the variable to read numeric and whatever the variable name was from before in this case distance we're going to set this now this is going to be the one difference from before whereas we had less than before we're going to set this to greater than 
and we because we want to check if it's both less than and both greater than uh, the desired value in order to make sure that we're covering both sides so we're going to plug that into a just like before we're going to plug this distance into B and now we're going to finally take a switch block put that at the end of all of this set it to logic just as before put the result into the switch here and now this yes case means that the distance is greater than uh, the desired value which is 5 so that means the robots too far away from the wall so what we're going to do is just as last time we're going to put a move tank block into here and we want the robot to steer left this time because if the walls to the left of the robot the robots too far away from the wall we want the robot to turn left so we're going to underpower the left wheel and overpower the right wheel and like I said before you can adjust the power split but it's usually preferred that the power split is the same for both left and right turns to keep the program balanced and now the very final thing that you're going to do is in this no case what you're going to do is take one last move tank block again turning it on but in this case you want the power to be the same across both motors because it's just going to go straight now what this program is doing is we're first defining our desired distance to stay away from the wall then we're going to have the ultrasonic sensor input its value and compare it to the distance if it's less than this value which is this case here we're going to turn away from the wall if it's greater than the value which is what it's checking for here then we're going to have to turn towards the wall and if it's neither too far nor too close to the wall it's in this sort of in between Goldilocks zone and we can have the robot just drive straight and of course this is going to repeat in an infinite process until you break out of the loop by setting a case here Now if any of you remember my two sensor line follower video from about a year ago, uh, this works on a very similar principle to that line follower where we set a Goldilocks zone in the middle and we check the value. If the value is greater than our Goldilocks zone, we have the robot turn in one direction. If it's less than the Goldilocks zone, then we have the robot turn in the other direction. And if it's meeting that zone, then we have the robot just drive straight and uh, just like the line follower we can also make a proportional wall follower out of this which I'll also make a video about if demand is high enough so let me know in the comments section below if you'd like to see that thanks for watching my tutorial this week if you found it helpful be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week and if you have an idea for a tutorial be sure to submit it in the comments section below thank you and I'll see you next time bye